What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the JW Sports Talk Show, where we fans welcome. As you see, we have two very special guests here tonight. Our first ever edition of the JW Sports Talk Show live debate segments. We have Daniel Kelly. He's, he's going to be representing not too much of the Anthony Richardson fan. He's just not not his cup of tea. Another side, we have Derek Larger. I, you know, you guys know Derek absolutely. If you were on last time, you know, you know, you know Daniel Kelly. So. Appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. It's going to be a good show. So first time ever. So stick with us. It might be a little choppy as I'm a little choppy as it is. But, hey, I want you guys, you know, Derek, introduce yourself first. Tell them where, the, you know, where they could find you, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So my name is Derek Larger, co-host of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. Uh, you guys can find us on YouTube anywhere that you guys listen to podcasts. We're on it. And you can also find us on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, at BTJ Pod. Uh, and you can also find me on there at Derek underscore larger as well. All right. Awesome. Daniel, please introduce yourself. Thank you for coming on, of course. Thank you, Derek, as well. Please introduce yourself where they could find you, you know, your website, all your takes, crazy takes, as Colts fans will call them. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hey, I like Josh Downs. Let's not be too hard on me. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I gave him a first round grade, so let, let, let's warm up to be a little bit. But no, uh, my I write for uh, my uh, NFL draft site. I'm a former New York Jets scout, uh, firstroundmock.com. Uh, that's where I spend about, uh, oh, about 27 hours a day, six days a week, it seems. And uh, then I'm also at, uh, like you said, uh, Derek, uh, Twitter, X, whatever we want to call it. Um, at first round mock it's it's where a lot of people know me extremely well uh about a lot of different takes and a lot of different subjects are a little bit outside the box so of course you can go on google type in my name daniel kelly former jet scout or jet scout nfl scout and there's pages and pages and pages of stuff that'll pop up and keep you busy to take a look at uh, my background stuff but glad to be on the show and really interested to talk about this topic tonight for sure it's kind of like being in an nfl war room just just a little bit different a virtual war room <laughs> absolutely it's our version i appreciate you taking time to come on to both of you truly appreciate it i know you're both busy both have a lot of stuff to do so truly appreciate it so real quick disclaimer appreciate before you. we get to tonight i will not be answering to comments like every single comment like we usually do we're on a little bit of a time crunch so if you would like to interject into the segment and you know and interject your opinion you will have to drop a one dollar super chat i don't like to be like that but we're on time constraint and we want to keep the the conversation flowing so that's the rule for tonight. Sorry, but not sorry. Kind of how it has to go. Just how the cookie crumbles tonight. So we started with Derek last time. Why don't we start with Daniel this time? So why don't you give me a quick analysis or, you know, just give me your good analysis on Anthony Richardson and why he isn't the future of the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, absolutely. I've looked at Anthony Richardson now extensively. I looked at him in 12 games in 2022, studied him, looked at him at one game in 2021 against LSU, watched all four preseason games, uh, all four regular season games, studied those. Uh, so I've, I've literally studied every snap that AR has taken. And to me, he is just not the answer for the Indianapolis Colts going forward. I didn't think he was the answer in the first place uh, for the Colts. I had a fifth round grade on him uh, coming out of Florida, the Gators, and I labeled him as a bust pre-draft. You can check out the article if you want. Um, you know, I never understood the hype on, on AR. Um, you know, super guy. Uh, I haven't found anything negative to say about him. Uh, you know, as far as a character standpoint, I have one of my writers on my site, in fact, that wrote some really nice things that helped me to warm up to him even more. I think he's a great individual, a great young man. But, you know, when I looked at him, you know, this game is about winning. And, uh, you know, I was a really huge surprise to me to see he, you know, the pre-draft hype, you know, ramp up on him. Um, you know, I, I wrote, you know, I sent, you know, my report out to different, uh, you know, Florida Gators uh, fan sites, uh, Facebook groups, uh, you know, about half the people down there even seemed really surprised that he was declaring early uh, to me he seemed like a, you know, just like a gadget guy, a guy that, you know, a guy that I thought, you know, Trey Lance crossed my mind when I saw him. Of course, I gave Lance an undraftable free agent grade heading into the process, uh, pre-draft 2021. But, you know, kind of like a Taysom Hill type, a guy that's a gadget guy. Um, you know, to me, the biggest issue I have really, or I guess I have a few uh, from a talent standpoint, but, you know, he's an athlete first in my eyes. 
and a quarterback second. Um, and everything he did at Florida was built around a play action game uh, that, you know, it just didn't translate to me, you know, to the NFL level that well. Uh, good size. Uh, a guy, you know, down in Florida is 6'4", 232. Um, you know, I saw what everybody else saw. You know, I give him credit, give him props. There's pluses and, they, you know, minuses to every, you know, prospect. You know, a guy's athletic, energetic, the big raw arm. We saw they hit the uh, gym out there in the uh, pro day. You know, tough as nails. Looked the part, you know, as far as like, you know, moving around to the pocket. And, you know, it was really good with his ball handling and uh, really, you know, comfortable, most comfortable running. You know, that was that was my thing with him. And I was able to take what what defenses gave him. But, you know, again, when I circle back at Florida, uh, you know, it's just a guy that looked like he was most comfortable with that play action fake game. Um, you know, I felt like he needed a team, you know, go to an NFL team that are really good running back to kind of feed off that system. He was running at Florida. Uh, you know, I, I felt that, you know, he just, you know, really had funky mechanics uh, throwing mechanics that were very much so upper body dependent, uh, which, of course, the mechanics are like, you know, aim, the aim with, you know, controlling the ball placement downfield, uh, you know, and, and I didn't feel like he knew what he was looking at in Florida when he stood back there. I thought he created a lot of his own drama, you know, just standing back there in the pocket, looking around. And, um, you know, he, he basically, uh, you know, threw an elementary route tree, uh, a compulsion to make bad throws and really melted down under pressure, whether it be a, you know, a down situation or a game situation. So that was kind of my synopsis of AR, you know, at Florida. You know, we flash forward to the Colts. I see a lot of the same attributes uh, with the Indianapolis Colts, um, you know, I looked at them in the four regular season games, the four preseason games, the four regular season games against Jacksonville, Houston, uh, the Rams and Titans. Um, you know, again, he has that athleticism. He has the toughness to him. He has the, you know, he made a couple nice off-platform throws that even caused the uh, television commentator to utter the names Patrick Mahomes at a, at, you know, and under his breath. Um you know, and he, and he was best when he was relaxed in the pocket. Uh, but, you know, again, you know, I go back to the three things that, you know, really, I mean, the guy is the same. He changed, he changed helmets to me, but, you know, he's got the unfixable number one, the unfixable throwing mechanics uh, that, you know, if keeps his feet close together, a narrow base, uh, throwing the ball. Uh, he's trying to steer and aim the ball more than just naturally release it. Um, and he doesn't, uh, you know, the ball sails on him in those situations. I mean, he was a 53.8% passer at Florida. Flash forward to the Colts, 59.5%. Really played in four games, which amount to two and a half games with all the injuries. Um, you know, five PBUs I charted, pass breakups, one interception, seven sacks in four games, um, you know, and just really struggled. I struggled back to reading coverages. Uh, that was another big thing. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say this respectfully. And uh, again, I think he's a bright young man, but he lacks football IQ. Uh, it just it's evident to me when he's standing back there and I know them are some fine words probably in, in the uh, greater Indianapolis area. And I love Indianapolis, by the way, I've spent a lot of time at the steak and shake there at the combine and love the town, but you know, it's just, to me, it's just like it, it's a lot of short passes. The guy just doesn't really seem that comfortable going into the intermediate, the deeper out levels of the field. Um, you know, a lot of, and that's, and that's, and why I say that it's evident to me by the double clutching, uh, stand back there, the holding the ball too long, uh, eating the sacks, a lot of running plays, 25 runs, 136 yards, 5.4 average, four touchdown with the Colts. Um, and then the third thing is, is I think the biggest reason I'll land on this uh, before I turn it over to you, Derek, and we continued on. And, and I appreciate you giving me the time to talk here though open up but you know the biggest thing is this guy cannot stay healthy and this was a huge concern i had going into the draft process uh, you know i labeled him as a high injury risk pre-draft uh, you know on my website uh, injured uh, three out of four games, uh, throwing shoulder surgery. Uh, you know, when I look at those mechanics, it scares me to death uh, thinking about him now trying to come back and throw with the, you know, off, off the shoulder surgery. Uh, you know, and, and again, he has the, the toughness of an NFL running back, but he's as fragile as, as, as the plates I use for dinner. You know, and that's, that's kind of where I land with, with Antia Richardson. I think he's a, a great guy, but I, I just, you know, I, I didn't understand the pick to begin with. And not only that, but, um, you know, I just don't see, I don't really, I, I think the Colts have got to go shopping for a franchise quarterback. Derek, you're not. Right. Well, um, to go kind of off a few different things there, you know, it, 
it's no doubt that Anthony Richardson was the most uh, prospectable quarterback of the top four when we looked at the draft last year. That was the main thing that everyone mentioned was this guy doesn't have enough experience. He's very raw. It's going to be one of those things where he's not like Bryce Young. He's not like CJ Stroud. He's not like Will Levis, who has a natural feel for throwing the football Uh, at least as much as it felt like when it came to those guys. And, you know, that is one of those things, only 13 college starts. And that definitely is much of a concern. You know, the Indianapolis Colts took uh, Jacob Eason in the 2020 draft. And when he only played one season as a starter at Washington, they used him mainly as a backup guy, but they saw just how, inexperienced he was and he just was not even close to ever coming near Carson Wentz and we saw how bad Carson Wentz turned out to be at the end of the year so you know there's there's a lot of guys that uh don't come into the NFL with a lot of experience and they just never quite get there uh but there's also other guys that come in with less experience and are able to help turn the tide and I mainly look at the fact that He's only 21 years old. He's going to be 22 this year. He could play two more years in the National Football League and still be younger than a guy like Michael Penix Jr., who's about to be 24 and a half come draft time. So it's very crazy to think about of how young this kid is, and that goes into the argument. He's got a lot more to learn, but being that young and being able to soak all this information from a guy like Shane Steichen is only going to enable him to become even better. There's just so much more room to grow. And uh, Daniel mentioned the injuries. That's, that's the other one. That is something that Colts nation just cannot get out of their own head. He had a season ending injury. This is just like every other Colts quarterback before him. It's the beginning of the end. There's just nothing to see from it. I just look back on it and say this guy's really only had about three major kind of injuries throughout his playing career. Uh, He had a meniscus tear in his knee when he was in high school, had a surgery on that before going to Florida. And of course, he had that thigh and hamstring injury uh, his first year at Florida before inevitably uh, getting into the starting status. Yes, had a few small injuries here and there that helped uh, keep him out of a game or two. But at the end of the day, I look at it and say he's not the first rookie quarterback uh, to ever have a season-ending injury, and he certainly won't be the last. I look back at some of the most recent ones where, you know, Josh Allen, he had uh, he had uh, surgery his rookie year that shortened him up. Matt Stafford had the same kind of shoulder surgery that – Uh, Richardson had to and we saw what he inevitably became now obviously with Stafford he's a very different quarterback but these guys do come back from these kinds of injuries and especially with Richardson who's still young and his body's still growing that's one of those great things where he's not like he's 30 years old and dealing with this and then his body is not going to come uh get used to this kind of injury so it is what it is but Looking at it going forward, uh, the kind of things that make Anthony Richardson great in my eyes, the willingness to learn, you know, you have to be a perfectionist about your craft. You have to be willing to put in all the time to be able to be a great quarterback. We've seen a lot of first round quarterbacks, even first overall quarterbacks that get taken and they just don't end up doing all the work. They think they have it made. They come in, they do the bare minimum and they just ultimately don't end up hitting the stride that they absolutely could have had if they would have just done that. And Anthony Richardson just doesn't spew that way to me. I hear all the time from the guys in the locker room say how he's always in the film room, always keeping a close eye on every detail, always trying to be as perfect as he can. Sometimes even taking it too hard on himself when he doesn't get it right, which I think is such a big thing to have that self-accountability when you want to be a top quarterback in this league. 
Daniel mentioned the character. There's nothing that you can say about this kid that doesn't just say, wow, this kid is like as good as it comes. I've never seen somebody so humble, but yet at the same time, just so confident in their ability to get things done. It's just, it spews confidence to the rest of the room and it just makes everyone else around you better when you have that kind of, uh, when you have that kind of character and that kind of mindset. Now, as far as the skills go for Anthony Richardson, because that's the main part here, he is a running quarterback. I understand it's it's kind of the direction that the NFL is heading in. They want guys that are more mobile. Now, Anthony Richardson is the most athletic quarterback in the entire NFL, so there's really no uh, there's really nothing to compare him to with this. Maybe other than Lamar Jackson, but Lamar Jackson is a little bit smaller than Anthony Richardson, so it makes things a little bit different because. It's a lot different of a league for him, but when it comes to the skills, four games, it's hard to just look at everything and say this guy could, you know, be great or he's going to be a bust. I think that you just try to look more at what was he doing versus what he wasn't able to do because you only had 10 quarters of football to actually look at him and say, oh, this guy's actually got something here. I mean, I saw some of the throws that were being made, especially a couple against the Rams, where a bunch of people stated when he was getting tackled by Aaron Donald and still was able to throw a 40-yard seam pass to Alec Pierce. I mean, there's not many quarterbacks in the NFL that have the ability to make that kind of throw with being brought to the ground and still being able to make that kind of throw. In the red zone, Shane Steichen, and that's another thing with Shane Steichen, I think Shane Steichen is the key ingredient for Anthony Richardson because the great quarterbacks, they had to have usually a coach that knows how to utilize their skill set in the best way. And I think Shane Steichen definitely knows how to because in the red zone, when Anthony Richardson got inside the red zone, There was never a point that the Colts did not score a touchdown when Anthony Richardson was on the field and they were inside the 20 yard line. They score, they score very, very quickly and they score with ease because he just has the ability to instill fear in a defense because he can throw it while at the same time, you have to admire his ability to run the football and it keeps these guys second guessing even for split seconds. And it helped utilize Zach Moss in the uh, backfield last year when JT was hurt, you had Zach Moss back there and Zach Moss was having the time of his life back there with Anthony Richardson because Anthony Richardson was causing these defenses to look at him rather than Zach Moss. So I look at the numbers once again, I bring this up to everyone in 10 quarters of football. Anthony Richardson had seven touchdowns. If we just take that at its base, and say 12 quarters of football, for every 12 quarters of football, Anthony Richardson gets seven touchdowns. Over a span of a season, that's 39-plus touchdowns. The only quarterback that had more touchdowns than that last season was Josh Allen. And we saw where the Bills ended up. The Bills end up going to the playoffs every year in a lot of ways due to Josh Allen. So the ability to have production Just in that short span of time, because I talk about it with Will Levis. He had a better completion percentage than Will Levis. It took Will Levis eight games to be able to score more touchdowns than what Anthony Richardson did in two and a half games. So you're just looking at the span, the short span and the numbers that Richardson was able to put up. Yes, the consistency needs to be better. There were quite a few throws that were either high or low just simply because he just has this arm and it's it's a difficult time for him to be able to get used to everything going on. But I will mention again, he's only played in 17 games. He's only had one off season with this team. It's very hard to say that he's not going to get better. And if 59% is the, if he's able to keep that or improve upon it along with his skill set, then 
I think he can become a much more polished passer and more consistent pre- uh, passer and still be able to do all the things that you need him to do in this system. And the last thing I'll mention here on this before we can kind of throw something back and forth with each other here, uh, you have a top offensive line. You have an elite running back. You have a very reliable weapon in Michael Pittman, and you have a coach in Shane Steichen that understands Anthony Richardson's game and knows how to get the best out of him. And if that's a great situation for an Anthony Richardson to walk into, much better situation than what two of the other three quarterbacks that were deemed to be franchise guys as well, potentially, are in. So I think Anthony Richardson is only touching the surface of what we can actually see from him. All right, Daniel Kelly, do you have anything to go back at from what you've heard? Yeah, no, I like everything that you had to say, Derek. I really do. I think, you know, that the Colts find themselves, you know, Colts fans, Colts nation, the Colts management team, locker room, everything, find themselves in a situation where there really is no choice. And I think you've done a wonderful job, Derek, painting an optimistic picture because that's the only choice the Colts really have at this point. I mean, they're in this, you know, they're, they're committed to it. They're locked into it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I appreciate what, you know, the, the attitude of Anthony, I mean, listen, I, I got nine kids, my wife, between my wife and I, and, you know, and, and six of our daughters, I mean, you know, and, and some of them are in that age group where, where, you know, Anthony Richardson is right now. If he showed up at the door to, you know, take one of our daughters out, I'd, I'd be happy as could be because he's just that kind of a young man. He's a, he's a wonderful human being. I mean, really and truly, I mean, you, you, it's, it's, you know, we hear all these red flags and if there's red flags to find, I'm going to find them on a guy, you know, I mean, it's just like, you know, Caleb Williams or anybody else, but there's no red flags. And I understand, appreciate he's in the film room. He's doing all these things. But at the end of the day, to me, it, it, it comes down to playing quarterback. And this is a guy who has never completed more than 60% in a full body of work at any level in football, whether, it, whether it's in, in high school. Uh, you know, he, he was a guy that was 53.2%. Uh, at college, he was 53.8%. At the Colts, he's been 59, you know, 59 some percent. Uh, you know, so, so, so this is a guy that's shown this pattern. And that's why over grading is, is something that irritates me because yeah, had he come in the right round, you know, fifth round, like I thought he is film great at Florida, you know, then he's a guy that's a pleasant surprise opposed to a guy that has this tremendous stress and pressure that that's painted against him. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, 45.0 QBR. Okay. What does that mean? Well, if you look at ESPN's QBR, uh, you know, ESPN, uh, you know, that slots him right around, you know, the bottom tier of the league. Uh, Justin Fields was 46.1. Sam Hollis, 42.4. Desmond Ritter, 40.1. Kenny Pickett, 38.1. Uh, Zach Wilson, you know, 30.6. And all these guys, what well, they all have in common, they're all just traded or, or are going to be maybe Zach Wilson too. Um, you know, so he's in the bottom tier of quarterbacks. And I think that's the biggest challenge because at the end of the day, Despite the fact that, you know, the Colts do have a nucleus around them, they have a very smart head coach. Uh, you know, in, in Shane Steichen, they have a, a great organizational model with, with with Chris Ballard and what they're trying to do there. At the end of the day, the guy is a is a is a runner first and a quarterback second. Um, he, he's got a very fragile body and, and the throwing mechanics. He's got that army relies on. But I circle back to that because that's what's going to get him in this league. That's what's going to get him. ball placement what's, is what gets these guys. And and and, and he. He's two different guys. When he relaxes, like I said, a little bit more, he's he's a little bit better and gets the ball of his hand quickly, but he has this natural proclivity that tense up in the pocket. And when he does, he's, his, his, his base, his feet narrow, they get closer together, and he goes back to the to the muscle memory. He goes back to, to, to an upper body release, and the ball's all over the road at the intermediate, the deep route levels. So to me, it's like the accuracy, the placement, and, and just the fact that he's, he's, he's injury prone and that is what scares me about him because I don't see him making it through a 17 game season the way he plays the game with him running like that the Colts are gonna have to make some wholesale changes because 
he's not going to last his body. He could be the best guy in the world. He, he could be, he could be a guy like you, like you said, Derek, you know, with the 39 touchdowns, he could have all that type of potential in the world, but you know, perhaps, you know, it, it remains to be seen, but, but if he can't stay healthy, that that's another game. And his natural instinct is to run the ball. When he's back there, he stands back there. He looks around. You can see him doing his double clutching. He's looking around. It, 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 he runs. That's who he is as a football player. And the Colts decided to take a guy who was very raw. Even Bruce Feldman with the athletic pulled NFL coaches. This isn't just a Daniel Kelly thing saying this guy's a bust, which I, which I maintain, but Bruce Feldman at the NFL combine, the reporter from the athletic pulled a bunch of different coaches on his, on the way out of the combine and, and asked him, what do you think? They said, well, he, you know, he's, he's, you know, extremely intriguing, but he's also extremely raw. These are NFL coaches saying this pre-draft. This is pre-draft Intel that was public knowledge out there the Colts decide to go ahead and blow the red light they go out just like the 49ers did and take a raw kid that they think they can make into a franchise quarterback and here we are well I mean all most of this just comes down to if Anthony Richardson actually just remains healthy that's going to be the big thing here is if he can remain healthy consistently and like I said you, you're right it's it's a very difficult situation you're when you're trying to prove to everyone that you are the guy and the worst thing that could happen to you happened to Anthony Richardson, where he had someone land on his shoulder wrong and it ended up doing what it did. It's a very unfortunate thing because now every person that I talk to when it comes to talking about Anthony Richardson and from a talent perspective is just as good as the rest of these guys. Everyone always mentions that that's the one downfall that everyone else just falls back on is, is Anthony Richardson actually ever going to remain healthy? Again, it's a very difficult track of this, but Josh Allen, just like Anthony Richardson came into the NFL, just extremely raw, had a lot of traits that you really liked. Wasn't as much of a runner as Anthony Richardson was, but he still has that style of play that Anthony Richardson is very capable of. And Josh Allen still goes around and does it very well, uh, albeit he does lead the league in turnovers because he has a tendency to trust that arm just a little bit too much. So that I will give you on that. But I do want to go back to the uh, the football IQ comment that you had made. Uh, I, I will say this. You, you may be right on it, but don't tell Shane Steichen that because Shane Steichen just had an interview the other day with the Colts guys, and they were asking him about – you know, what does Anthony Richardson provide on the field? And he got super excited talking about how he actually sees things on the field that makes him truly believe he is the guy because there's times when they're running uh, motions behind the backfield and Richardson is able to spot a soft spot in the coverage and is able to hit that motion coming out of the backfield at the right time because he sees it. He understands that that's where it needs to go in that split second of time. And I know you mentioned it before the short throws. A lot of people can make that, but it's all going to be about, can you hit the intermediate throws? Can you hit the long throws? We've seen, I saw the one intermediate throw that he had made to Josh Downs. It was a, thread of the needle. It was a fast, accurate, over the shoulder, uh, top of the head type throw that only Josh Downs could see and bring down. Uh, like you said, we need to see that more consistently, but I've seen enough from the first four games, just enough of those throws because I came into the season wondering, is he even going to be the starter? Because the Colts did not commit to that right off the bat. They said it's going to be up between Gardner Minshew and Anthony Richardson. You know, whoever looks better in the time being is going to be the one that's going to get the start to start the year. While Richardson does have a little bit of inconsistency to his game, he has that big play potential. He has that ability to throw the football deep down the field in which Gardner Minshew last year oftentimes just refused to do so. So it allows for the Indianapolis Colts to open the offense up way more than a lot of other quarterbacks because now you have the option game, 
these defenses now have to worry about him actually taking the ball and running. So they have to keep more guys up and that allows for more deep shots down the field with your guys and Josh Downs and Alec Pierce who are burners. And who knows if the Indianapolis Colts get another speedster in the draft with the insane wide receiver class that we have in this draft. You know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities this year for Anthony Richardson to thrive. And I think the system is what makes him so great with it because it makes it easier for Anthony Richardson to see the game and be able to make some of those throws. I'll give it to you again. The, the inconsistencies, he needs to be able to hit those common throws a lot more often. But as far as like big play potential, this is a guy that just has the ability to just make a one big play after another. We saw it in the Rams game when they were down 23, nothing. And then in the final 17 minutes, this guy just went berserk and then proceeded to score three touchdowns. And we've seen it in the Houston game. The first five minutes of the game, he had two touchdowns before he ultimately went out with a concussion and you know, he was doing a really great job in the Tennessee game before ultimately his season came to an end. I just see a lot more positive opportunities here for Anthony Richardson. And this time also knowing he's going to be back for spring practices because he's got uh, eight weeks ahead of his recovery on his shoulder, which is very fantastic. I just think knowing that he's going to go into it now, knowing it's his team and a whole bunch of other things going into it. I just feel like, this year, we're going to see Anthony Richardson do a lot more as long as he remains healthy. All right, Daniel, I know you said you had to be out here in a half an hour. Are there any last thoughts that you want to wrap up before we, you know, before yeah, we get out here? Yeah, you know, to me, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. I appreciate everything you're saying, Derek. I mean, it, it's, you know, if I can ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, just to, in your observations, just for the fans to kind of decide based on what you've seen, do you feel that Anthony Richardson is a better quarterback off schedule uh, when things break down and when the instincts kick in, the natural instincts kick in, like, you know, some of those plays we're talking about you were alluding to, or do you feel that he's better, you know, scripted on schedule? I mean, like, what are your impressions of like, like, you know, the off schedule versus the on schedule stuff? Yeah, um, he, I was going to say, I've seen him make throws uh, from inside the pocket that a lot of people uh, would love to be able to make. Like we said, with the with the throw he made to Alec Pierce while being tackled by Aaron Donald, that was in the pocket. You know, when the throw to Downs in that same Rams game, in the pocket. So there's a lot of good opportunities for that, but I do think that, Anthony Richardson does have that ability kind of like a Patrick Mahomes where you kind of want Patrick Mahomes to kind of stay in the pocket sometimes. Cause I think Patrick Mahomes is kind of the same way. I, Patrick Mahomes will kill you either way, but I think that Patrick Mahomes has just a lot more of those like on the, on the run. He just, he, everybody just starts focusing on that rather than everything else. And because of Anthony Richardson, and his ability to run, that can sometimes take the eyes of the defense away, and you are able to then make plays that wouldn't nor, uh, nor uh, ordinarily be there from inside the pocket. So I think that when it's unscripted and he can make a play on his own, uh, I do uh, think he is a little bit more natural at that because that was his game th uh, throughout everything before going to the NFL. But I have seen enough to where when Shane Steichen scripts it up, especially in the red zone, when in the red zone, I saw plenty of opportunities where when Anthony Richardson knew the design and knew what was going to happen, he looked, he ran it like as if it was it like he was born to do it. So through, from the 20 yard line to the 20 yard line, we'll have to see more of what he can do. But when it's scripted and it's in the red zone, I, I feel bad for any defense that has to deal with him. Fair enough. Absolutely. Yeah, that was just, I was just curious. Yeah, th thank you for answering that. Yeah. Always. Derek, is there something that you want to throw last thoughts out there too before we get out of here? 
Uh, no, nah, man. I mean, yeah, I appreciate the discussion, Daniel. Uh, at the end of the day, the only, the only thing I care for is to see Anthony Richardson play 16, 17 games this year. Uh, that's the main thing I want to deal with. I don't want to have to have another season ender for <laughs> him or have multiple stretches where he's going to have to, uh, figure that out. So yeah, at the end of the day, we're going to find out what Anthony Richardson's made of this year. <laughs> it just depends on if he stays healthy. If he stays healthy, I I, I love our chances with Anthony Richardson. But if he doesn't, then I will <laughs> will start having issues. <laughs> Joe Flacco, where are you? <laughs> no, no. Let's hold another Minshew thing again, please. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, and I think that comes down to, you know, I'll echo what you're saying, Derek. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when I grade these guys, you know, it's really with the heart and intent of putting them in the very best situations they can be in, the, you know, with a chance to succeed. You know, I, I would love to see Anthony Richardson succeed. You know, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, I, that, that, that's the whole idea. That's why I put a fifth round grade on to put in that situation. To me, uh, he was grossly overgraded. And, and even like you say, everybody always says to you, you know, about the injuries, we'll always stay healthy and everything. Even if he was healthy for every single game and didn't have any injuries at all, I have grave concerns that I've outlined about Anthony Richardson, you know, again, I go back to he's, he's, you know, that this was my thing with Trey Lance, you know, is he's, he's a runner and an athlete first and a quarterback second. And to me, that's just a really tough road uh, to, to go down in the national football league, because this is a league that is built on timing routes. It's built on ball placement. It, it's, it's built on consistency. It, it's, 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 you know, and all those type of things. And so, you know, that's a huge concern. And and I'm really concerned, you know, with him coming off this, you know, I, I know everyone has high hopes that he's going to come off this, you know, I mean, this is a shoulder throwing, throwing shoulder surgery. And to me, the mechanics were so incredibly funky going into this. Now he's coming off the surgery and now it starts after an athlete has surgery, it starts playing on their mind, I believe, a little bit more. Like, am I going to run here? What am I going to do? Like, am I going to get hurt again? Like, you know, all this, these doubts, you know, historically, mm -hmm. will start filling these guys' minds. And so, um, and I think the Colts coaching staff and 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 I think I think the world of, of uh, Coach Dyke and, um, you know, but I think, you know, they really got to dial down the, the, the rushing attempts. I know he rushed yeah. a lot, you know, and, and I know some of that was by design. Some of it was, and it seemed like most of it was by design. Um, it did got really dialed that down. You know, it, yeah. it's, it, the, the NFL is not kind to running quarterbacks. I, I think we can go through the list of all the guys that, you know, they're, they're banged up left and right. Um, you know, everyone from RG three on that we've seen over the last few years. And so to me, it's like, they've got to, you know, kind of change their philosophy. They, you know, like any team, they got to build a structure around Anthony Richardson that plays to his strengths. If his greatest strength right now is throwing short passes, then then build the game plan around that. Get yourself some receivers that specialize in yards after the catch, kind of like a Josh Downs. Uh, you know, st start start trying to build around the strengths. You know, a lot of times these teams will bring a quarterback in and they'd be like, okay, this is what you are and this is what we want you to be, opposed to just the, the, the you know the good ones are able to kind of mold the thing around him. You know, have the running game the way it needs to be, have the short passes, give him more support as he's learning through this process because. Because if they continue to try to throw him to the wolves running the ball and they continue to try to make him like Chicago did with Justin Fields and there's something that he isn't by rifling the ball consistently, the intermediate deep route levels, which is what he's never been in his life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's where the problems are going to enter into, um, you know, so, so hopefully this, 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 you know, projects in the right direction. I, I have serious doubts. Um, I don't think that it's going to work out or it's going to pan out for the Colts with Anthony Richardson, sadly enough, um, you know, just because of the reasons I've stated tonight, but, you know, again, um, you know, this is a look into the future that, you, you know, we're talking about today. So now, us really know for sure um you know at best you know this stuff is making educated guesses uh you know by going through all the traits and characteristics but you know again um you know great young man and i know the entire colts uh, fan base is depending on his success so it's it's uh, i mean you know everything i say i say with all due respect to you Derek, and into the you know to you jason and to the colts fan base it's it's i i don't like being it's very bittersweet for me to be in this role because i i just don't like uh being the bearer of bad news but at the same time the game film never lies 
Yep. I agree with you, man, where they do need to dial it back. Totally agree for all Colts, uh, for the Colts fan base's sanity. I hope that they do <laughs> uh, because, you know, like we, we need this guy. We need this guy to stay healthy. And you're right. Like the it's not only dialing back on those, but also training this guy to know how to take care of himself also not going in and trying to run over guys or get around people. Like you need to get out of bounds. You need to slide. You need to avoid contact as much as you can. Um, and I'll just say the last thing here. I mean, Hey, listen, if Peyton Manning could do it, who said, you know, Peyton Manning who led the NFL in interceptions his rookie year. And even himself said that he looked like he had no clue what he was doing can do it and come back around. I think Anthony Richardson can as well. So that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> As all of us Colts cool. fans are. And I would like to thank both of these guys for coming on tonight. I feel like there may be a part two that we can do sometime in the future. It feels like there's so much to talk about. I didn't, you know, I didn't expect it to go this well. You know, you guys kind of just took the show and that was kind of the best case scenario. So truly appreciate both of you coming on. Derek, I thank you for your time. Daniel, I thank you for your time. There's anything that you would like to, you know, do your outro with like, you know, no, well, you kind of did it already, but yeah. All right, this is gonna be it for JBS First Talk Show. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, put the post notification bell on so you don't miss any future lives, live debate segments. Brand new. We'll be back for more. I'll see you guys next time.